So are you tired of charging those small retainers and you really want to level up and start charging those high retainers? I'm talking four, five, six, even 10K a month. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you why it's actually easier to charge 10K a month than 1K a month. The very strange reasons why and how you can actually go about it. So if you're looking to level up your agency and move away from those smaller retainers and really take things to a whole new level, well, all you're going to do is keep on watching. Now, if you guys are not new to this channel, uh, you obviously know that I'm a big fan of breakdowns and I've divided this video into three. In the first part, I'm going to be talking about the 1K clients, the $1,000 clients, what they look like and what you can expect. I'm sure a lot of you can really resonate with this and I definitely can because I've literally signed $1,000 clients. Throw back to me pitching the first client that I ever signed for my agency. Which is $2,250 per month. My face of disappointment. Now, so people are like, more like, this is a no brainer for us. We believe in your brand. We know we can do this. We want a long term relationship with you. We're going to do the first, you know, two months to show you where we're at at a really big speed because they're like, everybody in the industry is saying the same thing. They've all been for everybody's scared. Now, this client went on to sign for a 50% off for a $1,000 fee for three months, and then we bumped up the price to 2 k a month. But regardless, they started off with 1K per month. I can definitely speak about that. And I also have clients paying me above 4K. And I actually have two clients paying me above $5,000. One paying me $1,125, and the other one paying me $5,500. And obviously, just these two clients alone, not counting all the clients that we have, uh, within mogul c which is my agency already surpassed that 10k mark so i can definitely speak about both sides of the spectrum and that's really going to be the first part the second part is going to be about those 10k clients and by these clients i'm talking about the clients that are at least paying you four thousand dollars a month why did i say 10k a month is it clickbait i'll let you guys decide but i generally believe most of you are going to be able to resonate much more with clients that pay us four thousand above uh, rather than just 10k because 10k alone as a, as a base retainer is a pretty big fee if you don't have some sort of a performance incentive, which is actually going to be what I recommend when you start out and how to actually structure your deals. And so without further ado, let's get right into the first point, which is all about those clients that pay us $1,000 a month. What do they usually have in common? And the first thing that they have in common is that usually they have one single channel of acquisition, of customer acquisition. And I'm sure you know these clients that are really, really tied to the Facebook ads or whatever service you've come in to deliver. And there's really nothing wrong with that. You are expected to deliver, right? To deliver results. But the problem with this is that they're really tied to your service, right? And as I'll talk about in just a second, usually when it comes to marketing and especially building new channels of acquisition, it usually takes a bit of time for the algorithm to learn about the brand, to learn about the audiences and really optimize. So that whole process might take one to two months. And so they're really, really tied to this channel of acquisition because if you don't get them enough sales with Facebook ads, they're really going to take a big hit to their top line. So that's really the first thing. And that actually leads me to my second thing, which is that they're actually really emotionally invested. And again, I don't want to sign like these clients are just a no go zone, uh, but you just need to realize that they're much more emotionally invested because for them, that type of money is quite a lot. Right. And so they really, really need that money to work which is no problem because you are, again, you're expected to get them results. But when you're working under those stressful conditions, it's really not the best environment to work. Um, so that's really the second thing. The third thing is the perceived value is actually much lower. And it's funny how that works, but the clients that are paying me above $5,000 a month, they are the clients that almost expect the least or they at least let us do our thing and just work tremendously well. It's funny because those clients that are paying us $5,000 plus a month those are the clients that could care less about what we're doing um, and they just care about the results, obviously, but they just let us do our thing and we do that thing very, very well. But with those smaller clients, they really tie the value to how much work, how much you know sweat equity you're putting in, which is completely understandable. And we put a lot of hours into our craft, but usually we end up working much, much more for those $1,000 clients than those $5,000 clients, even though we might get them the exact same result. Which actually leads me to my next point, which is when you're doing paid ads, especially paid ads um, for different services, I'm sure it's completely different, but especially if you're doing paid ads and you're putting an investment into an algorithm like a Facebook ads algorithm, it's actually harder to get results with smaller budgets 
And usually if you're charging as a retainer fee 1000 bucks a month, then your ad spend is probably gonna be two, three, 4K a month. And it's actually much harder to get results with Facebook ads with those sort of ad spends. It's very doable, right? Obviously if they have a really good offer and we do our thing, it's very, very doable, but it's actually much harder to get results with that type of ad spend than it is with you know, 30, you know, 50, 100K a month into the ads simply because it takes much more time for the algorithm to learn and to optimize because we're not testing as many things and we can't scale as fast so that's really the fourth thing and the final thing is i don't want this to sound wrong but there's just less incentive uh, on our side when it's a smaller client and i'm not really talking about the money because at the end of the day i like to take care of my team members and they get paid pretty much the same regardless of how big the client is or if it's a small company kind of like a startup where we have a performance incentive in place so i like to take care of my my team members and so regardless of the size they almost get paid the same but there's just a bit of a less incentive because at the end of the day we're not playing with huge numbers and at mobile we just love playing big right now i'm not saying we don't pick up smaller clients here and there especially if we truly believe in their mission believe in their product and maybe they have you know external investment or maybe they have an, just, just an incredible product that's going to kill it when it comes to facebook ads and we're going to be able to scale the ad spend very fast etc cetera, etc cetera. there's obviously exceptions and what i want to do with this channel is be completely transparent and honest with you guys so those are the things that i've seen from 1k clients and what you can expect and now onto the exciting bit which is 10k clients what you can expect and how they differ from 1k clients so 10k clients these are la creme de la creme and uh, these are the few things that you can expect from these clients now the first thing is that these clients are usually cash flow healthy and what i mean by that is that they have multiple channels of acquisition there's usually multiple ways that they're using to acquire their customers which means they usually have very positive cash flow because they have Google ads, maybe Snapchat ads, or maybe SEO, or just incredible organic traffic, or maybe, you know, even a PR, right? Magazines, blogs, or maybe they've just built an incredible brand and they're just known for a specific product and they get, as I said, organic traffic. Uh, and so all this stuff is taking care of them, but maybe they haven't tried your service, which is Facebook ads, right? And they really wanted to recharge the results, uh, but they have this thing taking care of them, maybe at three, four, five, six X return on investment. So they're not as tied to the results from the Facebook ads. Yes, obviously as an insane business owner, they wanna get a return on their investment and they wanna get it profitable and they wanna make a lot of money. But the first thing is they're not as emotionally tied and they can make more rational decisions instead of emotional decisions. And that's massive because especially at the start of my agency journey, when I had those smaller clients, usually would make short-term decisions that weren't great for the long-term just to optimize the cash flow and the profit for the short term. And that's not a way to build a business. I completely understand it because they're in a position where they have to do that. But with 10K clients, you can actually think more long term. And as a marketer, as an advertiser, that is just blissful. So that's really the first thing that you wanna keep in mind. The second thing is our perceived value is actually much higher. And it's funny how this works. I, I already spoke about this on the first point, but when you're charging a big amount for your service, it is perceived as a lot more valuable than if you're just charging 1K. You could be doing the exact same thing, but it's just gonna be perceived as much more value. Now, pricing should not be one of those things that you just randomly come up with on the call. It should be based on the ad spend. It should be based on a lot of other variables and factors that I probably covered on a video on its own. If you want to see that, go ahead and sub to my channel. If you haven't already, I've got so much content coming out on entrepreneurship and SMA, you're not going to want to miss it. And so go ahead and sub to my channel. And since I'm on that plugin train, go ahead and drop a big thumbs up. YouTube is just from that thing turns blue. I don't know what it is. It just finds it incredibly sexy. So go ahead and drop a big thumbs up. YouTube would appreciate it and I would absolutely love it. So go ahead and do that right now. And with that being said, going back to my point, Pricing should not be based on something that you just completely come up with. It should be based on variables like ad spend, like their financial position right now and where they're trying to get to. But given that you should be charging 10K according to the massive value you can bring them, your service is gonna be perceived as more value than a service where you're doing the exact same thing but are charging 1K. The sole difference is not so much on the scope of work, or the hours that you put in is simply on the value you're gonna generate for this client. And so that's the third thing that I want you guys to keep in mind. The fourth thing is that the team is much more incentivized. They probably really believe in the company. They're playing big and that we absolutely love that. And so it's just much more incentivized uh, being completely real with you guys. And the final thing is that this client is not as emotionally charged, which is massive because as I told you guys, now we can make rational decisions, not emotionally charged decisions, and we can actually think long-term because they have all these other channels of acquisition taking care of them and we can actually do our thing. And they also understand, because usually it's a much more seasoned entrepreneur or just a much more seasoned business. They also understand that marketing usually takes a bit of time, especially a new channel of acquisition. And so they understand that maybe getting Facebook ads to be completely optimized, right? And working might take one, two, maybe possibly three months to get it to the point where we wanna to get to. But once we get there, then it scales very fast. So those are really the five points that I want you to keep in mind with 10K clients. And those are the differences and reasons why I think 10K clients are actually easier to sign and easier to manage and actually easier to keep on 
for a longer time than 1k clients and overall much more blissful now a few final points that i want to cover uh, i'm sure what you're thinking well a 10k client is usually much harder to actually sign on a call uh, because it's just a bigger company and that's actually usually not the case and i want you guys to get rid of that limiting belief yes i will say that a 10k client expects a bit more professionalism a bit more branding on your side because at the end of the day if you're going to be charging a premium uh, fee then they expect a premium look but that has nothing to do with the way you sell them or the scope of work you give them. And that is what I want you to keep in mind. The only difference is just simply the look and feel of your agency. And oftentimes even that is not as important. Now, what would I recommend if you're just starting out? My biggest recommendation to close off this video is go for volume. Do not get so stuck up on the actual retainers. Yes, it might seem like a contradiction to this whole video, but trust me when I say this, because I've been through the process, Go for volume at the start because those clients will teach you so much, so much experience and you will gain so much experience and expertise and just how to handle clients and little things that you've seen from maybe just screwing it up with a few clients in the past. Those are things that I truly believe you need to go through before you sign those bigger clients. So that when you sign those bigger clients, I'm talking five, six, seven K clients a month, right? You can actually keep them for a longer time. Not only that, but when you do a killer job for them, they will refer you to their vast network and you've got this massive company that you've helped scale to whatever you're, you're helping them do, right? And that looks incredibly good on your track record. So that is my final recommendation. If you are gonna sign 1K clients though, what I personally recommend is you factor in some sort of performance driven incentive. You could talk to them about charging a percentage of ad profit. Uh, so whatever you actually generate them in profit, you can actually charge a percentage of that and that will actually help your team and yourself be much more incentivized. Not only that, but financially be rewarded for your hard work. So that's the final thing that I will say. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a big thumbs up. As I told you, YouTube just loves it and um, I'd really, really appreciate it. My team and I take many hours to record this video. It's not only the idea creation, but the editing and putting it out. So go ahead and drop a big thumbs up and sub to my YouTube channel. There's so much content coming out. Also leave down below any questions, any comments you may have on this video. And the final thing is if you haven't checked out my free masterclass on how to sign and keep four figure SMA clients, go ahead and do that right now. There's so much free value. There's nothing for sale on this masterclass and people are literally implementing the stuff, the scripts, the templates that I give you on that masterclass and using them to sign clients. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and check out the link in the description. And as always, guys, hope everything's going well in your agency journey and I will see you in the next one. Peace.